Good Wednesday morning, everyone. Scott Callan here with Mountaineers Now. This is another episode of Between the Ears. West Virginia's coaching search well underway. And Ren Baker, the athletic director at WVU, is going to be paying close attention to a number of games in the NCAA tournament. There's about four really coaches that maybe even three um, that have been tied to this West Virginia job for quite some time. There have been some others that have been tied to it in the past and they could maybe perhaps get back on that list or on West Virginia's radar. And I actually did an article today uh, highlighting some of those coaches that maybe could pop back onto Ren Baker's list or maybe climb up Ren ba Baker's list. So if you want to check that out, go to mountaineersnow.com. You can see that list. Uh, there's four coaches there. That's not including the four that are and have been heavily tied to this job. But we're not really going to talk about specific candidates today. We're really going to talk about just Ren Baker and trusting Ren Baker in this decision. There's been a lot of kind of uncertainty I guess with this whole coaching search, is he going to get the right guy? Is he going to be able to nail this hire? Because it's a big one. I mean, West Virginia basketball has been a very successful program for a number of years now under two head coaches with John Beeline and Bob Huggins. And you could probably even go back further than that. You have Gail you know, ears. I mean, there's just been a long history of success with this program. Obviously, you're coming off of a nine-win season. It was just full of ridiculousness, <laughs> um, much of which was out of their control. But you don't want to see this program take that step back and what we saw in 23-24 end up being the new norm. And, and I don't think even with a, a coaching hire that doesn't go right, you're not going to see what took place in 23-24 consistently. I mean, that was just – a complete outlier. They're never going to win nine games. It's just not going to happen unless something like this takes place again, but we're not going to put those vibes into the air. Um, but I, I do think that what West Virginia fans can bank on is Ren's hit rate with his hires. And it's not just his hires. It's his ability to put the resources into the program to where he can create success. You go back to when he was at Northwest Missouri State. Ben McCollum was already there. He had he did not hire Ben McCollum, but before Baker got there, it wasn't like McCollum had all this success. He gets there, and all of a sudden, things are turning around. And it was because the resources, it was because the confidence that Ren had in Ben. It was a number of things. But they were able to get that program turned around and really, really turned around. Ben McCollum is one of the top coaches in the country now at his level. And I think a lot of people would say that Ren probably played a big part in that in getting that program to where it is now. You go to, um, you know, him hiring Mark Kellogg the first time. Seemed to be a pretty good hire. So much that he got a, a bigger job and Ren comes to West Virginia and eventually he hires Kellogg again. And in his first season, Mark Kellogg takes West Virginia to uh, an NCAA tournament. They had a three-way tie for fourth place in the women's uh, big 12 standings. Pretty good hire. You look at um, what he did at North Texas. He hired Grant McCaslin. I'd say that hire worked out pretty damn good, right? Because he ended up becoming the next head coach at Texas Tech. And guess what? In his first year, Grant McCaslin took the Red Raiders to the NCAA tournament. So there is a history of success with Baker and his hires. And it's here in West Virginia, too, again, with Mark Kellogg. So I don't think there needs to be this panic or this worry or this anxiety that it's not going to be a good hire. For me, more than anything, it's how good is this hire going to be? Because I, I don't think that Ren's going to get this wrong. It's just a matter of how much is he going to get it right? Like, it's going to be a good hire, but is it going to be a good hire? 
Or is it going to be like, holy crap, he knocked this one out of the park, and all of a sudden this next head coach is one of the best 10, 15 coaches in college basketball. He's got an eye for this stuff. And I think that if he plays his cards right, which I think he probably will, this is going to be a really, really good hire for West Virginia long term. Now, we talked about it a couple of days ago, I think, about Dusty May and that whole debacle of do you kind of stay away from him at arm's length because he may be waiting for the Indiana job. The hell with that. I mean, like, again, if he's the guy for the job, you go and hire him. You don't worry about what the hell somebody else is going to do in their coaching situation. You go and hire the best guy for the job at that time. You can't go and base your search off of hypotheticals. You can only go off of what you know. What you know is your head coaching job is open. And if he's the guy, you bring him in. However, if you see striking similarities in terms of potential between Dusty May and, say, Darian DeVries or Pat Kelsey or one of those other mid-major coaches that's a little bit younger, maybe not as high up on other people's lists, if it's neck and neck, I think that is when you probably take a look at that situation and say, you know what? Maybe Pat Kelsey's not holding on for something else. And maybe same thing with Darian or some or, or, or Nico Medved or whoever, or Mark Byington. And if you take that into consideration, I think that's probably when you lean in that direction with the other guys and not Dusty May. But I don't think that plays into it at all. But regardless of which direction they go in, this is a, a I almost kind of want to call it like a sleeping giant because yes, there's been those years of success. There was the years where they got to the, you know, the final four, but I was back in the big East years. They, they had that run there with Javon Carter and Dex, Daxter miles where they went to the sweet 16, a couple of times, went to the big 12 championship, three straight years. They've been to the tournament a number of times, but I would argue that they haven't really broken through in the big 12 quite yet. They haven't just, they haven't gotten all the way there. And when you look at the, the resources in terms of goodness gracious, the NIL pool is continuing to grow. And, and in this day and age, that's key. And I think again, as I've stated with even the football team, I think, because of NIL, West Virginia is going to be able to compete maybe even more than ever because of that passionate fan base that can absolutely just pour into the pockets of these kids. So that's first. You have the NIL. Secondly, you have a world-class practice facility. World-class. That I'm telling you right now. That practice facility is better than I, – I don't want to put an exact number on it. I don't even want to say half. But there are less attractive or less impressive NBA practice facilities than West Virginia's. I know that for a fact. This is an NBA quality, state-of-the-art practice facility. You say, ah, what, what's that mean? Is that really going to mean – Yes. When recruits come on visits and they see this, it opens their eyes and think, oh, my gosh, like this is a place that takes basketball seriously. And I've got all this to my advantage. I can go to the gym whenever, as much as I want, free open access. And there's a ton of things in there outside of just the practice gym and all that stuff that they have at their disposal. And then you have the fan base which has been talked about a number of times. But this fan base is extremely passionate. We already know this. But if you – and it, it kind of ties back into that first point with the NIL, the more this coach wins and wins early, the more that NIL pot is going to continue to grow. The more that NIL pot continues to grow, the more 
you're going to be able to go out and get guys in the transfer portal. And let's be honest, it's going to be a hell of a lot easier to build a championship caliber roster in men's basketball than it is football. And that's not a knock on Neil. That's not a knock on Drew Fabianich and, and all the guys over there because they've done a good job managing it to this point. But you're talking 13, 14 guys as opposed to 85 plus, right? So you can spend more money on less players and form you and inform you a, a championship caliber team. I, I really believe this job is a kind of a sleeping giant, like I said. Ren Baker is going to hit on this hire. There's no question about it that he is going to make contact with the bat. No question. The question is, is this an eye seeing single? Is this a double in the gap? Or is it a grand slam that clears the stadium and it crosses the street? That's kind of where I'm at on this. We don't know. And we even when the hire is made, we won't know then. It's going to be two, three, four years down the road before we really know what type of a hit Ram Baker just got off that bat. But the one thing I can say is you got to trust. You have to trust Ren Baker. If you look at his history and even look at it here, like I said, with Mark Kellogg, you've got to feel confident about this. There's no way that he's going to take a hack at the plate and look back and see the ball in the catcher's mitt. It's not going to happen. So that's going to do it for me here today on Between the Years. I'm Skyler Callahan. Make sure you hit that subscribe button on YouTube and Mountain Years Now. Give us a thumbs up as well. And while you're at it, go over to X. Follow us at that same handle, Mountaineers Now. And we'll be back here tomorrow with another episode.